Hello everyone, my name is Amanda. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I was contacted by the BenQ company to review their Genie e-reading lamp. And here it is. So the one thing I like about this lamp is the aesthetics. Most craft lamps, in my opinion, are just plain ugly. And this one actually uh, is is actually kind of stylish in my opinion. It has this brushed gold on the top and I think you can get this in a multitude of colors. I think there's possibly four or five different colors. I'll link everything in the description box below. Uh, there will be a link to uh, Amazon and I think all the information is there on the different options. The other thing that I really liked about this lamp was the versatility of movement. So there's two points of articulation. There's one right here and there's one down at the bottom there. So you can easily move it in different um, positions. And the base is quite heavy. so. It won't easily tip over when you're moving it. You can also shift this section of the lamp like such. Sorry, I'm in my bathrobe tonight. Uh, and also you can tilt it back and forward at, like so. So however you want to position the lamp, whatever works best for you, I know my husband likes it because I can tilt it towards me and the glare is off the TV. So that's a bonus for him. <laughs> uh, but I typically like to have it uh, just in this position. The other thing I like about it is the surface area that the light covers. So this light basically covers the width of my chair, which my other craft lamp that I use uh, doesn't doesn't cover that much surface area. So that's a bonus. The other thing I like is how easy it is to turn it on and off. There's also a function where you hold your finger on the ring for two seconds and you'll see that there's a light right here. It's orange, it looks yellow on the video, but it's actually orange. And this is the optimal light for viewing a tablet. If you press for another two seconds, the light turns green and this is the optimal light for reading. So I thought that was kind of a neat feature. My favorite, uh, my favorite feature of the lamp is actually the different types of light and the in different intensities of light that you can get from this lamp. So there are two types of light you can get from this lamp, cool and warm. And when it's on the cool setting, you can get varying intensities of light. So on the cool setting, I like this setting because it makes um, look, makes looking at black fabric much easier to see the holes. But if you don't want it as bright, if you're working on, say, Ada, and you don't need it as bright, you can turn it down. If you press this button, it actually, oh, and I just turned it off. But if you press this button, still on the cool setting just a second press it again you can move between warm and cool and I like this because if you kind of sort of hover around the middle there that is supposed to mimic daylight and the reason I like this is because I don't have natural light in this room so when I'm kidding up a project using synthetic light. I'm not really getting the true color that I'm going to see in natural daylight. So more times than that, I find when I pull floss and then take it upstairs to work on a project, I'm like, oh, I don't really like these colors together. That's because I've 
kitted up the project in synthetic light. So this is a good feature if you're if you're wanting to see the true color of floss together and floss on a specific fabric. So if I hit this button again, it's going to take me to the warm setting and it's going to have different intensities of, of basically warm light. And I did a little experiment because one of the things that I struggle with is stitching white floss on white fabric, which I don't do very often, but when I do, I have a hard time seeing it. And I found that turning it to the warm setting, it actually made it easier to see the white thread on the white fabric. So I thought that was that was a bonus. But my favorite setting is the cool setting on high. I just find it just illuminates the holes. It makes everything easier to see. So overall, I would give this this light five out of five. If I had if I had one criticism of it, it's the portability of the lamp. It's easy to take from like one room to another in your house so it's portable in that way but if you're wanting a light to take to say a retreat or a, like a stitch day or whatever I would say that this this lamp is not uh, quite useful for that but I think if they were to make like increase the portability of this lamp you'd lose out on some of the other features like the weight of the base and uh, some of the other features like the maneuver maneuverability. So that's my review of the Ben Q Genie e-reading lamp. I'll put the link, the Amazon link to where you can purchase this lamp in the description box below. And I'll put the link, uh, the company's link uh, to their website below as well. Uh, so that's it for the review. I'm going to turn the camera off and come back in a minute to do a craft room tour. Hi everyone, I'm back to do my craft room tour. I'm going to start off at the door to my craft room and I'm going to try to remember to indicate where I purchased different things, but if I've forgotten anything, just leave me a comment down below. So the first thing I want to show is the back of my door. That is where I hang my ironing board and iron and I got that, I guess it's like a hook. I got it off of Amazon so it's just a good use of the space and it just keeps the ironing board out of the way. This next section is where I keep all my patterns and magazines. My cat sleeps there while I'm working. I call him my feline my feline assistant during the day. So these are calyx shelves that I got from Ikea and I got those boxes from HomeSense, I think, which I think is Home Goods in the States. I'm not sure. I think they're the same store. Um, and I'm not quite sure what I have in them. <laughs> I'll have to check that out later. Uh, and then those are my magnetic boards that I got off of Amazon with my needle minders. That is the infamous IKEA cart that I think every single cross stitcher has in their position possession. Under the table, I have a Alex unit. Is it Alex? Yes, Alex. I always get the Calyx and the Alex mixed up. That's an Alex drawer unit. And I keep my sewing fabric and different fabrics in there. And then I keep my printer and my laminator on top. And then this table unit, I'll talk about the table and then I'll go up above and show you the stuff up top. I made an L-shaped table out of two Linneman tabletops that you can get at Ikea. Oh, and the Alex unit is from Ikea also. But the tabletops are Lin Linneman. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm not sure. And I purchased the adjustable, I don't know if you can see the legs, the adjustable table legs because I wanted a counter height table so that I could do my uh, cutting and whatnot at that table. So that's it there. That chair is from Ikea. And then if I pull this out, 
you'll see in behind I have like storage space where I keep my frames it's just I don't have a closet in this room so that's kind of my quasi closet and then that unit in there underneath so that's holding up the intersection of the tables is from Walmart the calyx unit was too tall to basically uh, the two by two shelf was too short for counter length or counter height and the three by three or so the two by three was too uh, tall so I store all my that's where I store all my mirrors and my Nora Corbett's and those boxes are from Buclair and they actually fit mirabilia patterns perfectly and then this over here is just a shelf that I got from my mother-in-law she was getting rid of it and I store my Mill Hill kits another I think there's some magazine freebie kits in there as well and I got this unit it's like a indie I want to say like the laundry room like if you look up laundry room storage on Amazon, this will come up. And it was the perfect size to sort of slide into that space. It's on wheels, so it's I can kind of push it back if need be. And then I store like my foam and some of my finishing stuff in behind. So now I'll just come back over. Hopefully I'm not making you guys sick. Just come back over here and do the top part. So the pegboard is from IKEA. It's from the Skadis line. I don't know if I'm saying that right. S-K-A-D-I-S. If you go to the IKEA website and type in pegboard, you will, this will come up on your screen. And all of the attachments, like the, the containers, uh, the, the hooks, there's another hook there that's holding up the Mill Hill beads. All of those also are from Ikea and they come with, well, they don't come with the unit. You buy it separately, but it's all part of the same line. And I store my bobbinated floss in the double-sided containers. I think they're thread containers. You can get them from Amazon. And then I store my Mill Hill beads in these little containers. Again, I got that from Amazon as well. And then the shelf down below here is from the picture frame section of Ikea. It's just a picture frame ledge and I use it to store, uh, I use it to store finishing things and just little, I don't know, little things that I've collected over the years. I'm a Garfield fan, so I have my Garfield tie guys up there and my Simpson family photo. Um, is over there I store my paints I have one over here I store my paints on it and my glue I think the only thing that you can't get at Ikea for use on the pig boards is the spool holders that you see there I think they've discontinued those and then over here I just have another Alex drawer set I just store finishing stuff in there and then on top I have like a little plastic drawer set that I use to store my buttons and whatnot and then I have one of those little I don't know what those are called but I don't know what those are called but they're this the famous scissor holders that everybody's collecting nowadays And then over here I have, now these are two different calyx shelves. This is the four by four calyx shelf. And then I have a one by four calyx shelf, which I use pretty much the four by four holds all my cross stitch kits, which is ridiculous. I know I need an intervention. I really do. <laughs> and then up top, I just have more fa um, sewing fabric and whatnot. And then up there, 
I don't know, I was looking at that earlier. I've, I don't really know what's in those boxes. I should bring them down and look to see what's in them. I have no idea. The inserts for the scrapbook paper are also from Ikea. So, so for the Calyx units, you can get different inserts. You can get drawers. Um, you can use the cubes. Uh, there's something else you can get for them. If you Again, if you go to the IKEA website and type in Calyx, you'll get all the shelving and the uh, accessories that, that go with it. It'll come up. And then here's my sewing machine with my sewing project. And I haven't yet named my sewing machine. Apparently, according to Melanie at Melly Alley Stitches, you're supposed to name your sewing machine. I have not named her yet. And then I just, this year I put up again, more picture frame ledges just to kind of brighten things up and make it kind of a little bit more homey, homier. My son was trying to swipe my teddy bear collection and me being the mean mother that I am, I brought it in here and put it up high so he couldn't. That's not true. I do. When he comes in here, I do let him play with them, but because they're up so high, he kind of forgets about them. And yeah, I just have pictures of my family and some cross-stitch pieces and a picture of my dead cat. Uh, what else? Um, oh, I have all my little office figurines. Um, we're big fans of the show The Office. So I keep those up there. And then I have another Ikea cart, which... Yeah, I don't know what's in those boxes. I should really kind of go through and because I don't really remember what I put in some of these places. And then this is kind of the boring area of my craft room where I do my work during the day. Although I'm only doing work for two days a week at home now, which kind of sucks because it means I have to go into the office. So I'd much rather be surrounded by floss and craft things than just four walls so but I do my work here and yeah there's boring stuff in those shelves or in those drawers I think it's all work stuff and then this unit actually let me talk about the unit the this shelving unit or not shelving drawer unit here and then this drawer where's my finger drawer unit here and then the table the tabletop came as a set from Ikea and then I bought another Alex drawer set on wheels and this is good because if I'm not making you guys sick I can just pull it out and when I'm like kidding up a project or I'm working on something I have another surface area to, to work on because you would be surprised at how much mess gets made to finish one ornament or to sew one project bag or to get up one project. There's stuff everywhere. So it's nice to have that little extra bit of space. And then when I'm done, I just slide it under like so. And if I ever need to like use my serger, I just kind of move, move it over and then move my chair in there. But I pretty much use all that. That's where I store all my cross stitch fabrics and I store it by color just because I find when I'm kidding up a project, I look more for a color of fabric than a count. So I just go to the color and I decide what count I want it on and see if I have a count in that specific color. And then this is my floss wall that usually appears in my videos in the background. And the top two rows are mostly color and cotton. There's a little bit of Victorian motto, not very much though. And I don't know if you can see the numbers along the top, but it's basically sorted by color family and I'll talk about that in the clip I put in after this uh, how I 
how I basically come up with what color family uh, each skein of floss goes into. And then I have my DMC sorted by a color family. And then at the bottom is my hand dyed by Rolanda floss. And then I have some Karen water lilies. And then I have my white and black DMC. And then over here is where I sort, where I store my Krynic, or Krynic, I'm not quite sure how to say it. So I'm just moving this out of the way. So basically what I did was, oh, I have my petite treasure braid on a hook there too. Basically what I did was I took a bobbin box, like the, the, the bobbin box, boxes that have the lids on them. I cut the lid off and then I drilled holes. I don't know if you can see, I drilled holes in the back and then I just hooked it into the, the hook. And then at the bottom, again, you probably can't see it, I put basically little plastic stoppers to bring it out from the pegboard so that things would balance properly. And then I just store it like that. It kind of acts as like a little shelf. So it makes it easy to find my my Krynic. So that's my craft room and I'll be back in a minute to basically talk about my floss storage. Okay I'm back and I have here uh, my DMC color card and basically for those of you who are not familiar with the DMC color card this is samples of the DMC floss put into a very large foldable um, book, so to speak. Uh, and it's organized into color families, uh, 1 to 20. And then over here is a list, um, and, and it's in numerical order, a list of basically all of the DMC colors. And if you're looking for um, a specific DMC, um, you just look up the number and to the right of that DMC is the color family that it belongs to so that you can find it easy, very easily on the color card. So most of the floss that I get is uh, color and cotton floss. Um, and I have two examples here. Uh, but a lot of, uh, a lot of patterns um, do not use color and cotton floss. So uh, the challenge that I was having was kitting up projects using uh, floss that was not the call for floss in a specific project. So what I do um, when I get my floss of the month from Color and Cotton is I use this card um, to basically color match to the best of my abilities, um, you know, what the equivalent DMC uh, potentially is. So sometimes you can find a DMC that's a fairly decent match um, and sometimes there isn't an equivalent DMC so when there is an equivalent DMC what I do is sometimes there's a couple that it may match to I write the color family and I write the DMC that it's closest to if there isn't an equivalent DMC that it matches to what I do is I just kind of drape the floss along the color families and try and kind of determine what color family uh, it, it should belong to um, because there's different types of like there's like obviously you can see this is like a green blue um, this is more of like an ice blue um, so I would think it would be more um, like this one here I said it was part of color family number eight so you can see there's kind of a similarity there um, this I said was part of color number eight, uh, family color number eight, because it kind of matches this ice blue. Um, but if there isn't really a closest match, sometimes I'll just put the color family uh, on the back of the card and I'll store it with um, that color family. And then I basically take it over here and I put it with color family number eight. So then when I go to um, kit up a project, um, I store all of these in a spreadsheet. Uh, and then I use like an Excel filter to just basically uh, 
filter um, the information, but normally designers will give DMC equivalents. So I will basically filter on the Excel spreadsheet by the DMC colors and uh, basically determine uh, what equivalent color in cotton would, would match that DMC color. And then on the spreadsheet, it also tells me where um, it is on my pegboard. So for instance, if I was looking for uh, the, the floss that I was just showing you guys, which was, I think it was, uh, what was it, Pat, uh, where was it? There it is, Patagonia. It would say right beside it that it's in color family eight. So I would have to go, all I, all I would have to do is go to that peg, pull the peg off like so, and search for it through the, the cards and then hook it right back on. Um, so another uh, reason I like storing my floss and color families is um, if I get a pattern and I don't have a equivalent color and cotton or alternative floss um, in my spreadsheet, I can look at the DMC and um, basically um, see what color family it's in and find something that um, potentially would closely match. Uh, another reason why I like to store the colors like this is because sometimes uh, floss calls for uh, more than one skein. Well, I may only have one skein of a specific color, so what I can do is I can look through the colors and see if there's two very similar colors like this one here and this one look a little bit similar. It's not on the camera, it doesn't, but in real life it does. And I can just tweed them together uh, and use, uh, I'll have enough floss for the, the entire project, um, even though I don't have two skeins of the same color floss. So yeah, that's how I store my floss. Uh, I find it uh, very quick and efficient to kit up projects. Uh, it's uh, much easier to find DMC as well. Um, if I'm looking for, I mean, I'll go to my bobbinated DMC, DMC first, and then I'll come to my um, pegboard if I don't have it on my um, in my bobbin box. Yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed a tour of my craft room and enjoyed how I, um, enjoyed seeing how I store my floss. Take care.